The vehicles are in the best shape they've ever been in. There's uh, some irony. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that is ironic at the close of the program, but we've been flying well. We had a tremendous uh, effort after Columbia to make sure we fully understood the, the condition of the vehicles. Uh, the whole team has opened up better than ever before, works very, very, very well together. And the last mission was, I think by any measure, the smoothest, uh, least number of in-flight anomalies. It is a bit of a shame to say that. Here we are with uh, five launches left to know we are finally figured this whole thing out. Yes, it is a shame. Uh, I'm an advocate for flying the shuttle longer to close the gap, to maintain our lead in human space flight. I think the United States needs to do that. Uh, there are many voices in that arena. Unfortunately, that's not the direction we seem to be going. Well, let's talk about that for a moment. You know, the, the, the conventional wisdom is that decisions have already been made vis-a-vis uh, -vis the supply chain on the, on the space shuttle that would make it next to impossible to continue flying it beyond uh, the, the five flights we have left. Is that not true? Uh, actually, it's not true. Uh, I'm, a lot of the, uh, the folks who have said we can't fly the shuttle longer aren't dealing completely in facts. Uh, we test the water with all the other contractors. Lockheed Martin's one of the long poles because they've got to build new tanks. Right. And they have disassembled some of, of the uh, equipment necessary to build tanks, but that equipment still exists at Mashu and could be put back into service very easily. The space is there. Uh, the material is there for about four or five additional tanks. And then there would be time if, as you built those to build more tanks if you wanted to fly the shuttle a couple times a year until the United States had another human spaceflight capability. All right, so this idea is possible. Is there, are there any other big issues that you would have to do? That, yeah, I mean, as far as the, like the, the space shuttle main engines, that kind of thing that would require, uh, be required to, to get the, the space shuttle back up there? Uh, there's no, no showstopper whatsoever. You'd have to bring some suppliers back online, but they're ready to go. Uh, people will come. This is, if you want to fly shuttles longer, the folks are there to support it. All right. NASA Administrator Charlie Bolden said a couple of things over the past few days that uh, said in, basically the shuttle system is inherently unsafe. This is from somebody who's flown on it four times. And then something to the effect, it's like uh, he was talking to workers, it's like putting a gun to your head, Russian roulette style every time you launch. What do you say to that? Well, those, that's an unfortunate choice of words, especially the Russian roulette uh, choice. The job, this is a tremendous team of people that works together, led by G Bill Gerstenmeyer up in headquarters and John Shannon down at the space, uh, Johnson Space Center, and John's deputies. There are, in the neighborhood, of 20,000 people engaged in working on the shuttle at any given time. And if you want to use the, the loaded pistol analogy, what I would say is the way we approach business and work together to test, to evaluate, to check out the vehicle, to make sure that it's ready to go. Our job is to make sure the gun isn't loaded. We aren't going to fly a vehicle that, that is unsafe. Now, safe flight has a risk. When you accelerate that much mass to 17,000 miles an hour, there is certainly some risk associated with it. But this team puts its heart and soul into making sure that those vehicles and the astronauts are as safe as they can be. And this team has never worked better than it works together right now. I would like to see the United States, first of all, I'd like to see us maintain our lead in human space flight but if we're willing to give it up, as we seem to be, I hope we work very, very hard and very, very quickly to regain it and to do great things with this NASA team. You think we're giving it up? Absolutely. I think we're handing it over to the other countries that right now, uh, Russia will maintain its capability on Soyuz. Uh, China and India are working hard to have a capability. We have uh, the Europeans that are launching uh, logistics to space. Yes, we're giving it up. We uh, will have a dip in, in the knowledge base and the experience base, and we'll have to rebuild that when NASA gets back on a program that takes us back to a leadership position in human spaceflight. If you were running the show, what would you do? And I would continue to fly the shuttle until I had a United States vehicle that was capable of supporting the International Space Station, whether it's a commercial venture, which right. is fine, if commercial can meet its, its uh, 
goals, that would be just fine. But whether it's commercial or NASA, we should not stop our program, our American program, until we have a replacement program. That's what I would do. Howard DeCastro, thank you very much for your time. Thanks Miles. for stopping by. Sounds like a good plan to me. Always a pleasure. Just save me a seat, will you? On one of those flights? <laughs> All right. That'd be great. Thanks for dropping by.